Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Coding Decoded. My name is Anshay Dudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe. And here I present the third question of the weekly contest 294, which is minimum lines to represent a line chart. Here in this question, we are given an array of stock prices and each array element has two parts. The first one signifies that on this particular date, the price was this one. What we need to do, we need to identify the minimum number of lines needed to represent these entire price range for example on the first on this particular date the price was this on this particular date the price was this on this date it was this so when we draw line when we represent them in the form of a graph how many lines would be needed for this purpose so here they have provided us with an example i'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation so let's quickly hop onto it lead code 2280 minimum lines to represent a line chart and this is a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. It has a slight trick involved in it due to which most of the developers will not be able to solve this question by themselves. And in this video, I'll be talking about that trick too. Also, in case if you have any question for me with respect to a DSA or if you want to ask anything in general from me, then please feel free to drop a message on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated below. So do check them out. Now let's get back to the same problem. Let's take the same example where we are given that on the first day, the price is seven represented by this. On the second day, the price is six. We represent this here. On the third day, the price is five. Fourth day, the price is four. Fifth day, the price is again four. Sixth day, the price is three. Seventh day, the price is two. And eighth day, the price is one. So this index represents the price and this represents in the date. This is what, we, what that is given to us. Now, if I ask you guys, how many lines are needed to represent these three points, how can you identify this up? It's really simple. What do you do? You calculate the slope of this point from this point. So let's assume the slope comes out to be P1. And what do you do further? You go ahead and calculate the slope for the next point, next immediate points. So that will come out to be P2. In case the slope for this particular line is same as the slope of this particular line, and that means all three points lie on the same point. Therefore, what do we need to do? We need to calculate the slope between consecutive points and we need to check whether it matches with the previous slope that we have calculated in the past. If it matches, then all three points lie on the same line and we need don't need to create a new line for it. If it's a mismatch case, that means we need to create a new line there. What I'm trying to say, let's walk through in a very simple example. In the first go, what do I do? I create a variable no named as previous slope. And by default, let's initialize it to plus infinity just for giving the default value. And let's start the iteration. So let's consider the first two points and let's create the slope value. So what do we do? Uh, we, we extract six minus seven. So we do the subtraction between these two points. What do we get? We get minus one. And for, for the X coordinate, what do we get? Two minus one is one. So the slope becomes minus one by one, which is minus one. Uh, this is my current slope with respect to these two points. So represent, let's represent it with minus one over here. And since the previous slope is not equal to the current slope, what do we do? We will need a new line for this purpose. So the count gets updated to one. L uh, along with this, let's update the previous, previous slope value to minus one. And let's do the same thing for the subsequent points. And now this time we should consider these two. Let's cre uh, calculate the slope value. Five minus six is minus one minus one by three minus two is again one. So minus one by one gives you minus one again. Since these two are equal, that means all these three points lie on the same line. As a result of which we are not going to increment the count value. Let's continue. Uh, also uh, the uh, previous slope value will remain as it is, which is minus one. It's time to consider the next coordinate and let me just change the color of pen. Let's calculate the slope value. So 4 minus 5 uh, gives you minus 1, minus 1 by 4 by 3, which is 1. So minus 1 by 1 again gives you minus 1. As you can see, the previous previous slope value and the current slope value remains the same. Therefore, all these four points lie on the same line. So these four lie on the same line. So far, so good. The count value remains the same. Let's proceed ahead. Let me just change the color of pen for better understanding. And let's calculate the slope value. So here the slope value will come out to be four minus four is zero. So zero by five minus four is one. So it, it comes out to be zero. So what do you do? You check whether it's equal to the previous slope value or not. It's not equal. Since it's not equal, it's time 
uh, to increment our count variable for the number of lines it gets updated to 2 and with this simply means we are we have to create a new line for it so we we are comparing these three points and the slope for this particular line is not equal to the slope of this particular line as a result of which a new line is needed uh, we have appropriately updated the count variable to 2 and let's continue the process further let's update the previous slope value to 0 and uh, let's move further let me just change the color of pen let's take blue let's create ca calculate the slope value again 3 minus 4 is minus 1 minus 1 by 6 minus 5 is 1 so the slope value comes out to be minus 1 again whether it's equal to the previous slope value it's not equal as a result of which we will need another line for this for plotting this point which is in sync with our expectation the slope of this particular line is not equal to the slope of this particular line the count variable gets updated to 3 and the previous slope value gets updated to minus 1 let's continue the iteration and let's take red pen let's calculate the slope value 2 minus 3 comes out to be minus 1 minus 1 by 7 uh, minus 6 is 1 so the slope value comes out to be minus 1 minus 1 is equal to the previous slope value therefore uh, we will continue using the same line and we can say that these three points lie on the same line itself let's proceed ahead let's calculate the slope for these two points 1 minus 2 is minus 1 minus 1 by 8 minus 7 is 1 so the slope value comes out to be minus 1 and since it's equal to the previous slope value what we can do we can say that it all these four last three points lie on the same line therefore uh, the count vari count variable will not be updated the final value of count variable is 3 which is in sync with our expectation and this is what we need to do in the coding section as well I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have talked here but there is a small trick which I stated in the beginning of the video so let's quickly move on to the coding section and conclude that trick but the approach is this the first thing that I have done here is to sort the stock prices on the basis of x coordinate I have created the previous slope variable that I stated in the ppt as well then I also created the count variable that I showcased in the ppt2 I move ahead and iterate over all the elements or the points that are stated in my stock prices array I calculate the slope value it's exactly the same that I showcased in the presentation we are subtracting the y coordinates of ith index minus y minus ith index divided by the x coordinate of ith index minus the x minus 1 coordinate of the uh, point and once I have calculated the slope value I compare it with the uh, previous slope if both of them are equal what do I do I skip and continue ahead in my loop otherwise I increment my count variable and I also update the previous slope to current slope so if you try and uh, submit the solution up then you will see one of the two test cases fail and that failed because of the procession issues in Java it goes out of uh, the maximum range and uh, these cur the current slopes are not appropriately calculated if you replace this by big decimal then the solution will work so how to counter this up we just need to refactor the code a little for identifying whether three points a b and c lie on the same line using the division operation can we do it using multiplication then that will serve our purpose what i am trying to say let's see that live in action so let's assume we have three points a b and c and uh, we are aware of the coordinates of a and b and c so let me just write them as well so this is x0 y0 this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 and for identifying whether these three points lie on the same pla same line or not we have we, in the previous section we used the division operation and the formula that we identified was this one so we identified the slope between b and c using this and we identified the slope between b and a using this if these two turn out to be equal then we say a b and c lie on the same line segment and can we represent this in multiplication form the answer is yes so what do you do you take this denominator above so this goes to the rhs side this goes to the lhs side and using this formula y2 minus y1 into x1 minus x0 if that is equal to y1 minus y0 into x2 minus x1 if this equation is met then we can say that a b and c again lie on the same line segment and this is what we need to do this is what i have done here and in case this condition is not met remember not met then we say a new line is needed and i update my count variable 
no previous uh, slope calculation is needed in this solution and let's go and submit this up accept it the time complexity of this approach is order of n log n why n log n because we are sorting the input stocks prices on the basis of x coordinate and the space complexity is constant time with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you in some time with the rest of the questions